chart by chart. It, it, it doesn't make a difference. You know, if the market does have a day two sell off tomorrow, it's not going to make a difference. If one goes down, they all go down. Right? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing okay. Hell of a day, right? Hell of a little sell-off we've had here. Uh, going into uh, today's session, we talked about uh, how that bounce yesterday, uh, you know, really did us no favor today. Um, there was no really technology names that I was sitting there today. I go, wow, I got to own. Because again, when you have a dead, well, I don't want to call it dead cap bounce, but when you had a bounce yesterday, the initial test of the 50 day moving average, it left a lot of charts in the middle of the ranges. So last night's focus was away, right? Away uh, from technology, especially to the long side. And we talked about names, you know, that we talked about names, uh, other names, right? Like, you know, names like Caterpillar. That usually, again, you know, you wouldn't look at, but again, there were there were very, very uh, aggressive names. Uh, you know, names like oil names. Uh, oil names had a second, you know, second run before pre-aggressive reversal. Uh, and we talked about yesterday uh, the banks. When was the last time the banks had a two-day run? Uh, and, and again, so everything started slowly but surely souring, right? Very by little, you could see it over and over and over again. And the names that were weak yesterday, the technology names that couldn't rally, that had that you know pretty good aggressive snap back into the close uh, because the queues held uh, the, the, the 50 day moving average started getting weaker, weaker and weaker. Now the question was, well, what was gonna, you know, what was going the Fed kind of give us some, some new clues, right? Uh, they've been talking about interest rate hikes for three years and every single time they're about to do it, and they even announce a day they're going to do it, and a month they're going to do it, and the second they're going to do it, all of a sudden, the game plan switches, right? So every every rate hike that was supposed to be imminent for the last three years has been pushed back, and kind of here we are now. So uh, there was a lot of weakness initially today uh, in the NASDAQ. You could just see it. NVIDIA was super weak. You had Facebook super weak. Apple was reversing. More put buying coming. Uh, Amazon never really rallied. We talked about Amazon uh, yesterday in the close, uh, even beyond, right? Remember that chicken headline that we talked about last night? Again, who the hell is walking into a Kentucky Fried Chicken, okay, and ordering fake chicken? I'll wait. We'll talk about the pivots in a second. But the most important part was what was going to happen with the Fed. And the Fed came out uh, basically a very hawkish stance, and they're saying, well, expect another rate hike, right? Well, excuse me, a rate hike. Uh, in March. Okay, we'll shall see, said the blind man. Okay, this has been going on for years and years and years. So until we actually get a rate hike, their only dude is literally talking about uh, a rate hike, but it got the market nervous. It got the market jittering. Uh, obviously, the whole COVID thing is not helping anybody out. Everybody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody else, or including themselves, that is probably sick from this thing. We all agree. Probably you're not going to die from this thing. Again, who the hell wants to be sick? And yet everybody's sick. Uh, so what happened today after the Fed got really, really aggressive, right? You could start seeing uh, really big, uh, big money being put down uh, on the option side, on the put side of a lot of your favorite technology names. Uh, you had NVIDIA. You know, when NVIDIA was at 293, uh, 293, they were coming for the 275, 270 puts out of nowhere, right? Short-term expiration. Uh, when the video was taking out yesterday's channel uh, below this 283 level, they started coming for the 275s very, very aggressively as well. Uh, Amazon, right? They just never rallied, just never participated in any rally here uh, in the last couple of weeks, finally closed below this whole macro range. Again, this is not a good thing, right? Uh, again, I don't know. We all know, we all agree that Amazon's going to be at 5,000 one day. It's probably not going to be at 5,000 tomorrow. And that's the most important part is what we can see and we can catch on day to day. That's the number one thing. But the craziest part about it is I saw so many stocks. And again, tonight, I could have eased. If you, do, if you did your research tonight, right, you could literally, any stock you want, right, any stock you want that closed below rising daily support, you could put it on your watch list for tomorrow's day two selling. 
Now the question is, is there going to be day two selling, right? Or at least aggressive selling continuation from today's move. That's the million dollar question, right? Nobody knows, is it possible we get a dead cat bounce tomorrow? Because again, you got a 3% decline today on the NASDAQ 100, that's kind of a big deal. 3% in one day is a big deal. And the most important part is, you know, which stocks are gonna continue to go lower? Now, if we do have a dead cat bounce tomorrow, I have zero, absolutely zero uh, interest on the long side. There's, there's not a chart out there that I'm gonna turn around and go, wow, this thing looks really, really good when you have the masses looking like this, right? You, and, and I looked at a chart, like for example, like Netflix, Netflix is approaching its 200 day moving average. Forget about being rejected off the 50, this, that, the other thing. This thing is approaching its 50 day moving average. You have Facebook that lost its 50 day moving average. You have Apple, who's been the pillar of strength, closed literally right, right? Closed literally right on its upper trend line, okay? And if this upper trend line loses, we started seeing really big, aggressive uh, 170 short term. Uh, short-term expiration in Apple. So if Apple starts leading the way, you know this thing could, you know, the market could really start escal escalating. If you have rising rates and you have, uh, it, you have a correlation disconnect. If, if, if technology moving lower, uh, you got names, for example, like, like Microsoft. I mean, look at this move on Microsoft, approaching really, really exaggerated uh, support here. So again, it's going to be very, very important for the bulls tomorrow, especially if we get a washout at the open. If we get a gap down. The bulls really need to reclaim, right? They really need to reclaim macro levels. And, and if it's gonna be, if you're going to get a reversal tomorrow, it's gonna to be a very, very big if. But if you are going to get a very, very big reversal tomorrow, we have to have a down open. We have to have a down open, throw the baby out with the bathwater. You wanna make sure that retail is screaming, no moss, right? Hanging the white towel, saying, I don't wanna be in anything. Sell my stocks at every single level. I just don't care. That's where you're gonna get your reversal. The worst thing we want to see, if, okay, if you're a market participant, especially on the buy side, right? If you're a perma bull, the last thing you want to see tomorrow is a gap up, okay? I'm telling you, the last thing you want, you're not going to get a gap and go after this type of sell off. If you get a gap up tomorrow, there's a high probability whatever stock you're looking at is going to get stuffed right at 60 minutes supply and reverse course back to the downside. So if there is a bullish type of dead cat bounce tomorrow, and again, that's a very, very big if. You're going to need a complete washout tomorrow, um, complete, aggressive, really, really big, I'm out, I'm out of the market, forget about the market, this market's the worst, right? That's the, that's the feel, right? You need, I don't wanna use the word capitulation because you can't be in a bull market and be in capitulation, but you wanna get people who bought stocks at really, really random prices and got caught really, really, uh, 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 off-centered, right, with their, with their pants below the ankles, those are the ones you want them to kind of quit and say, I'm done with the day, I don't care what happens, let me sit on the sidelines, cash uh, is a position. That's what we're looking at tomorrow. But if we do gap up tomorrow uh, and we start rolling over, right, get rejected of 60 minutes supply, start rolling over, and again, guys, you can go literally chart by chart. It, it, it doesn't make a difference. You know, if the market does have a day two sell-off tomorrow, it's not gonna make a difference. If one goes down, they all go down, right? So Amazon looks terrible, uh, Netflix looks terrible, uh, Facebook, right? Facebook looks terrible. Rivian looks like it really wants to test uh, its IPO lows, right? That looks terrible. There's, there's literally, you know, win on the casino space, first close today over uh, below this whole range here. That looks terrible. Um, you got, at, we talk about Intuit, look at Intuit. Right, look at it into it. Usually a name that um, I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't look at. But again, look at this first close below this whole rising support. So there's a lot of value tomorrow on the short side. Again, you don't need to be too creative if we have a, a, you know another wave of selling. Just take your favorite stock, uh, make sure it takes out today's lows. Right, make sure it takes out today's lows. Let it put in the bottom, or excuse me, let it put in the low. Right after today's lows, let it rally back and that opening range low. If it takes out the new low. That's the guns blazing, that it will be uh, another wave of selling. And this is where you can uh, capture some pretty good alpha uh, on the way down. So it's gonna be a very, very important day uh, tomorrow for the bulls. If you are a bull and you're looking for a reversal, you really need uh, a gap down and then kind of wash red to green scenario. If you are a perma bear, right? You, you're praying to God 
uh, for a gap up, stuffed into supply, 60 minute supply, reversing course, going green to red, and start taking out uh, today's range. That's it. And usually I know it sounds funny. It says, we're either gonna go up or we're either gonna go down. But yeah, but that's what the case is. And it all depends which way we're gonna open up tomorrow. If the futures are good tomorrow, it's a sell bias. If the market, if the futures are bad tomorrow, we're either watching opening range lows or reversal back to the upside, uh, red to green for quote unquote, uh, a dead cap bounce. So we'll see, right? It, it, we'll see. Some, some, sometimes you have a game plan that's one-sided and you wanna see uh, everything confirmed. Tomorrow you're literally seeing a, po a possibility on both sides of the market kind of wanting and maybe getting uh, what they want. So let's talk about today. You had some really, as you can imagine, some really aggressive selling today. Um, you know, again, we talked about last night, we talked about last night how technology just wasn't, you know, wasn't in bloom, right? You had, you know, we were talking about the caterpillars of the world and stuff like that, but there wasn't, there wasn't a case to be made about how quote unquote strong, there was no strength uh, in technology based on last night's, uh, you know, pre well, bounce off the 50 day moving average. So uh, these were the big levels on Amazon. Uh, and the most important part of, of, of Amazon, uh, you can see the 3320s, 3312s, uh, this was 3302, excuse me, I'm dyslexic sometimes. Uh, Amazon's putting in its lowest close in this whole formation, right? This is the lowest close in this whole formation here. Uh, the last piece of area you have is roughly around the 3270s. Um, if Amazon starts, again, if Amazon gaps up tomorrow and starts putting in, taking out today's channels on the low side, there, there's a lot of room down. There's definitely a lot of room down. Uh, especially if we have uh, another wave of selling that looks really, really good. Uh, Amazon got hit pretty hard here, at, uh, pretty hard here towards the end of the day. Uh, Caterpillar 219 needs to build. Ironically, Caterpillar, if you were talking about strength in the market, that's where the strength of the market was today. Uh, Caterpillar uh, got above the 219 level and went all the way up to 223. Congratulations. I know some of you guys traded this thing. Not really my thing, but congratulations for all you guys uh, who did. Uh, Citrix got nowhere near 100 bucks. Uh, and then they started coming for NVIDIA, right? They started coming for NVIDIA, especially in the afternoon, very, very aggressively. First, they came out uh, off that 287, uh, 287 level, you know, got it down to like 285 and change, snapped it back. But the, the key was here, that 283 level. That was yesterday's low. If it confirms, can see 278. Uh, NVIDIA got absolutely smoked uh, really, really hard. Uh, it took out this uh, 283 level. Uh, I, thought, I thought it was going to stop at 278. It went all the way down to 275. And now this whole bottom range here is in play for tomorrow. As you can see here, how many times it held this bottom range. So a uh, huge move down on NVIDIA. The initial, the initial game plan today on Tesla was if there is a weak open today, a wash into the five-day moving average for a bounce back, that five-day wash was like after the world was was imploding uh, after the Fed. I, you know, there was zero interest, at least for me. I was too scared to take any bounce on this thing. Uh, and the, the worst part of it is, I didn't even take uh, I didn't even take the upside move uh, in Tesla. There was a pivot here, eleven fifty six. I didn't even take it. I, I just wanted no part of the upside. It went up like ten, eleven dollars before a massive, massive reversal uh, in Tesla. Uh, Adobe got destroyed right from the word go. 538, if it builds below, can flush. Uh, look at Adobe, got massacred, absolutely massacred today. Uh, got downgraded, traded all the way down to 514. Uh, Caterpillar, blah, 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 take on the way up. Uh, Beyond was great. Uh, Beyond was actually pretty good. I, I just wish it had more liquidity. Uh, this is now an active swing. Last night we talked about, they announced they announced a, a deal with uh, KFC to put their meatless chicken in Kentucky Fried Chicken. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you're going to Kentucky Fried Chicken, you want that nasty shit, right? You want the shit that gets your cholesterol 2,000 points where it's supposed to be. You're not looking for no healthy, you know, healthy chicken. The whole PR didn't make sense to me. Anyway, this was definitely the, the move, you know, one of the bigger moves, 6360 uh, if it builds below, shots to go red. Uh, again, this is an active swing, guys. There is no reason to be buying the stock. Anybody who buys the stock now, I, I just don't, I don't get it. Uh, anyway, it took out the 63.60, closed right at the lows in the 58s. I think this thing goes lower uh, until this thing starts. Re I, 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 there's no catalyst to buy this thing. I, I just don't see a reason uh, why this thing should be bought. Uh, the, the, the PR got sold off very, very quickly. 63.60s uh, got sold, confirmed the 63. It sat there for like an hour and then finally just. 
uh, absolutely collapsed. Uh, again, everybody, uh, everybody, this, I hate Facebook. Not hate Facebook, but, but I, I dislike it. So I, initially I took a short on this thing. It goes down like a dollar and change. And then some news that comes out, right? Some news comes out. I covered some of it into a wash. Some news comes out. It stops me out, break even on the balance. It runs up $2 on some, some fake news, yada, yada, yada. You turn around, it loses the 200-day moving average again. I looked at the close. This thing is down seven from the 200-day moving average. Ugh. Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, Qualcomm, not a big move, ran up about a dollar uh, off at all-time highs. As you can imagine, everything got sold off uh, after that as well. Uh, Tesla, again, this is, you know, Leave this thing alone. Uh, anyway, here's my comments. Uh, here is uh, comments on on uh, on Beyond. Get down to like 30 to 50 percent. This was at 61. Now it's at 58. Everybody should be down to like 10, 15 percent on their runners. So really good move there. Uh, Nvidia is getting slammed. Next week's call uh, puts coming in for the 114, 270s, 79.50. Next stop, it traded down all the way down to 75. Got absolutely manslaughtered. Um, and that's it. And that's it. So going into tomorrow again, if you're uh, if you're a brand new trader, it might be challenging. Okay, it might be challenging. There's gonna be a lot of whipsaws. If you are uh, fairly new to trading, you might want to sit out the first half hour. Okay, let the market kind of you know develop, uh, you know develop some sort of personality. If there is going to be a dead cat rally tomorrow, you're gonna see it, right? You're gonna see it, especially after a wash. If there is going to be another wave of selling, you're going to see that as well. So if you are brand new to trading, again, sometimes it's good to kind of digest, take a step back and just kind of appreciate the moment, kind of appreciate uh, what's going on in front of you. So next time around, you're mentally prepared for it. Uh, other than that, for all you guys who are experienced, should be a pretty good day. Should be a pretty good day. Let's see what happens exactly. Worst case scenario, uh, we'll see if there's a theme develops uh, after 10 o'clock. But most important part is let the trades come to you. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take